Good morning and welcome back to it, guys. Your Friday edition of the Now Morning Show, where, as per usual, we give you events to add to your calendar. This one being a black tie event. It is a fundraiser and it supports efforts to continue the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival Museum. So mark your calendars for November 9th as the operations manager of the TTCM and the director and chairman of the TTCM are both joining us via Zoom this morning to tell us more of Lesbury. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Let's say good morning and welcome to Mr. Peter Corby, the operations manager of the TTCM, and Kenneth Atai, Kenny rather, who both joined us this morning to give us some insight. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. Good morning. Good, good morning, Ayanka. Good morning, Central Brown Tobago. Thank you for joining us and for continuing endeavors that give us so much that we need. A lot of the history of our carnival and artifacts, parts of it that we may not always get to experience or see. And really and truly a labor of love because keeping all of this intact and making it accessible to the public takes funding. So tell me a little bit about the event Specifically, first off, translating what the title entails. And if we can start with you, Mr. Corby, give us that insight to bring us up to speed. Yes, thank you very much. Well, the spree was the brainchild of Mr. Kenny Atai, um, and he came up with the concept of having a rum appreciation event, which um, we are doing in partnership with Andesturo. It's about you know, featuring and this was finest rum. And, you know, we, we use the, the term, the name L'Esprit, um, coming from the French term meaning the spirit. And, you know, it's really more because carnival is all about, you know, that spirit, that festivity, that spirit of transformation. So we thought it was a, a, an apt name to, to use. And, of course, because um, it's a rum appreciation event, I mean, rum is a spirit, so it was a good way to tie the, the boat. Clever. Very clever. <laughs> now, in terms of supporting the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival Museum, how do, does that tie into things? Tell me a little bit more there, Kenny. Good. Okay. Thanks again, and, and um, thanks for having us. Yes. So, we now have a home for carnival. Anything to do with the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, mm -hmm. and that is at the Petty Bank Berlin Corner, Duke and Charlotte Street. So three years ago, we got this opportunity to go after um, <clears throat> a tender bid uh, for the repurposing of the Penny Bank building for something to do with art and culture. It was vacant and it was owned by the first citizens man. We were successful and together with uh, Dr. Roslyn Gabriel, renowned, uh, a well-known legendary uh, designer and uh, mass band leader for Children's Carnival, uh, Dr. Kim Johnson, uh, who was then the director of the Carnival Institute of Trinidad and Tobago, and myself, we got together and we were able to put a, a project plan in place uh, with a, a three-year program to create this Carnival Museum with a vision where any visitor, whether local or foreign, could experience the spirit of our Trinidad Tobago Carnival, which is different to every other carnival that you could you could ever visit. So uh, now that we have the home, the the building, uh, we we have the home, uh, we have been able to continue on our mission to collect, preserve, educate, uh, everything to do with respect to our. Uh, artifacts and uh, carnival information that will safeguard our rich history of creativity uh, dur during every carnival throughout the years. So we have been successful in hosting while renovations are going on. Mm -hmm. um, over the last two years, uh, we were able to get a grant from the Ministry of Tourism to start this project off. Uh, the renovation included gotten out the entire building uh, because it's an iconic building we have to preserve the external uh, but inside we have been able to repurpose for the purpose of uh, for the museum so far we have been able to host five temporary exhibitions during the exhibition period uh, we have uh, entertained over 2,000 visitors to these exhibitions they have been well received by schools we have had over 10 school tours, 
uh, visiting the, the exhibition. So, but we need now to raise funds to continue the mm -hmm. work of the museum. Uh, we are looking at having a, a grand opening at last quarter 2025. Uh, I just around the corner next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have come. Uh, so the entire project was, was um, broken up into four phases. Phase one and two concentrated on the construction. Uh, that has been, that's all 90% completed now. We're now entering into phase three, which is about digitizing our content. Mm -hmm. So those who are not able to come into the museum could also now access uh, what, what is um, available at the museum. Uh, via our platforms uh, on the website. That so, is fantastic uh, stuff. And it yeah, means then so, that the, the event itself for the 9th card, for the 9th of November, should be a bit of an infusion of all of that as well, you know, giving people a sample of what they will actually experience. Tell me a little bit more, Mr. Corby, as to what the actual event will show us of the Trinidad and Tobago Museum and, of course, the spirit of Carnival. Well, I think uh, you really use the, the right word there. It truly will be a fusion of, you know, everything that the culture is about. And uh, Carnival has so many different elements in it. And we wanted to try to bring as much of that into the, into the event as possible. So while the main feature would be the rum appreciation session, um, I was very careful to say it, it, it's not a rum tasting session, it's a rum appreciation session because um, we want you know persons to come in and really enjoy you know what what Angostura's products are about. Um, it's going to be hosted by the legendary master distiller, Mr. John Georges. He'll be taking persons on a journey through the ages, you know, in terms of the rums, the different products that Angostura has to has to offer. But the opening part of the event is actually going to be an art exhibit and a silent auction. So for this, we partnered with the Art Society of Trinidad and Tobago. And so far, we've been able to curate over 50 pieces of art um, from local artists, because of course, you know, we want to make sure that we highlight our, our local talent. Mm -hmm. And we have all of this art that is going to be available for, for our guests to, to view and to purchase whichever they feel to. And then going into the Rum Appreciation event, we're going to have some entertainment, uh, we're going to have that room appreciation session. Of course, you know, it's, it's like a, it's going to be a little bit of a fest. So, you know, we're going to have, you know, that open bar. We're going to have a wine bar. And it's really going to be a fantastic event for, for persons to enjoy. It sounds that way. I want to ask about the art a little bit in terms of the types of pieces you've curated. Are there particular themes that will be explored, perhaps? Well, we try to stay true to who we are. And yes. The art actually is going to be all carnival themed. Um, just a tease, I, I have actually seen the armed um, pieces that were curated, and it is astounding. Trinidad and Tobago really has a lot of artistic persons who are very creative. And, you know, this is one way to support them, you know, to give them an opportunity to showcase what they have to offer. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, we, we decided that we had to partner with the Art Society on this one. Right. Now, Kenny, you did mention that there are a number of uh, collaborations taking place here because, yes, Angostura and the Art Society have been named already, but are there any other sponsors or collaborative bodies that you'd like to make mention of? Yes. Well, um, if I could just go back to our strategic plan um, based on five pillars. Um, the f one is having a physical museum, uh, which is what we already um, accomplish. Two is having a virtual museum, which is what we focus in on now. Mm -hmm. That requires a lot of funding. Three is having a Hall of Fame for both, for well, for Mars, Pan, and Calypso. Four is a research and education hub for schools and, uh, and students and, and enthusiasts. But the fifth one is of collaboration. Uh, we <clears throat> um, know that there's a lot of work that has been going on before uh, with individuals and private um, persons that wanted to curate uh, and preserve some of these artifacts. So we now provide them a, a home to bring this in and make it available to the public. Mm -hmm. But on this particular occasion, we have had uh, um, part uh, partnerships and 
and collaboration taking place with uh, Tribe, Lost Tribe, Digicel, uh, among others. We are now reaching out to the wider um, corporate world. We are asking them to come on board. Uh, we need a lot of funding to keep this going, to continue to get the schools coming to the, to the programs. Uh, we also have outreach programs that uh, for those who cannot come to, to the museum on Charlotte Street, that we go out to them. So Corporate Trinidad, here's an opportunity for you to uh, come support and be part of uh, the legacy that this generation is responsible for putting in place. You guys, let me take the opportunity to thank you for doing the work to create the spaces, to meet the people, and to continue to preserve that legacy. But for those of us who actually want to attend, Peter, could you remind us of where we can get tickets and when we have till to book those tickets as the event is happening on the 9th of November? Yes, well, as it is right now, we have tickets available on Island e-tickets platform. Just search for the spring, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to put your tickets directly there. Or alternatively, you can contact me at 738-8948. That's 738-8948. Or you can send me an email at operations at ctcarnivalmuseum.com. Uh, just reach out to me and I'll make sure to get back to you and we can book those tickets for you quickly. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your endeavors and for joining us this morning. Best of luck on the 9th and maybe I'll see you there. Yeah, looking thank forward. You very much. <laughs> looking forward to seeing. And again, that is uh, Mr. Peter Corby, the operations manager of the TTCM, along with Kenny Yatai, the director and chairman, making sure that they continue to preserve the carnival legacy with a fundraiser happening on the 9th of November. Add it to your calendars and add the now morning show to your calendar too, because when you come back, birthdays are next. Stick around, guys. Thank you.